Reverend, I'm, I'm so honored to have you here. Uh, <laughs> you know, we speak about heritage sites and we speak about heritage areas. And I'd like to believe that you're, you're one of our heritage sites uh, as a nation. Um, you are one of the longest serving members of parliament in this country, which means you've been serving in this country since 94, uh, which some people may not know. And your political party has been relevant since the ACDP. So I'm very, very honored to have you here. And I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing your story, story on how you started the ACDP, maybe a bit of your, your upbringing. And then I've got some, uh, they called controversial, uh, but I, I don't think they're controversial for you because you're, you're backed by your faith sure. and the Bible. Uh, but to mainstream, the mainstream world out there, they mm. deem controversial questions that I'm hoping to pose to you as well. But if you don't mind, if you can maybe take it to the beginning, where's home for you? Uh, how did you grow up? How did you end up in America and then coming back home? I was born in Pretoria in a secure place that was a police training college for white people in Pretoria West. My father was a policeman and because of it, he was one of those privileged policemen who could live on the premises with a family. Mm -hmm. There was a special quarters for married policemen and their families. So that's where I was born. Mm -hmm. I grew up there started primary school there in Pretoria West. And for higher primary, I went to Adridgeville. We used trains those days to mm -hmm. Adridgeville, to Walton Primary School, where I was an athlete. When people see me today, I'm out <laughs> of shape. <laughs> you were a sprinter? I or? was a sprinter, yes, okay. I was a sprinter. Okay. And I, when, I, when I went to high school, I played soccer. Mm. I was good, I must tell you. <laughs> to an extent that uh, I was nicknamed after Kaysam Dawin. Okay. So you're really good. I was really we good. We almost lost you to football, <laughs> basically. <laughs> almost. Hey, sir. Almost. Okay. okay. 1970, I was supposed to have gone for trials mm. with Chiefs. Mm. All right. But then the following year, I had to go to high school, okay. to Eastern Transvaal, because of the good results that school was having. Mm. I saw in just in the magazine, I said, I love this school. This is where I want to go. Yeah. The school was Maripi High School. We were the last group of students that attended Maripi because the second year I was there, they had a name change from Maripi mm. to Orovelani. So it was two in one. Okay. Okay. Started with Maripi, Maripi. ended with Orovela in high school. And then 73, I went to Tef Luop. Mm. Went to Tef, where I did my teacher's diploma. Mm. And uh, when I finished, uh, I'm skipping something that I'm not sure whether it will be relevant to you. It's up to you to, to decide. Yeah. But we'll wait to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I was in TEF 73, mm. my course was supposed to be two years. Yeah. I did it in three years. Because in 74, I thought I felt God speaking to me that I must enter ministry. Mm. So because it was already late to apply to any Bible school or college, I decided to carry on as a student. Mm. And um, and preaching on campus. You you were always a a, a faith focused child. You went to the church growing up. That was your upbringing, or was this a unique? No, well, 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 that was my upbringing. Okay. But there was a difference, and a change that happened in my life in seventy one, mm. when I made a personal commitment to Christ. Okay. Okay. Now, obviously, as a young boy, I was naughty like all other boys. Sure. And um, after making that commitment to Christ, I just had peace that I never had before. Mm. I mean, I just enjoyed and felt so good about what I was feeling. Mm. And I just wanted to share it with my friends. Mm. Some of them took it serious, some don't take it serious. <laughs> to an extent that was an, when I was at TEF, 
I, there were students who shared what I felt yeah. and would preach to our students sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know? And obviously the lecturers who heard about it would criticize us, you know, and but we didn't budge, we didn't change. Yeah. My goal was 74. I wanted to go to a Bible school so that I could become a full-fledged preacher. Yeah. But I had a friend there who was a lecturer in the school I wanted to go to. Yeah. And with excitement, I said to him, you know, this coming year, I'm coming to your area. He said, coming to my area to do what? Mm. So I'm coming to Bible school. You are going to be my lecturer. You know, he asked me one question that changed my focus yeah. and my mind. That time I dropped uh, other classes and courses I was doing, mm. and I left. I was left with one, yeah. one and a half, yeah. so that at least I could still be on campus. Sure. <laughs> so he said, "Are you sure? God said you must drop your studies mm. and come to Bible school." I said, and then he added, "Now, mm. is it a matter of did he say you must do it now?" now. I couldn't answer the now part. Mm. I said, "I'm not sure." about now. Then yeah. he said, if you're not sure, I advise you to continue with your studies. Yeah. And then leave when you know that he said now. I, I find a lot of uh, tertiary students, <laughs> especially especially SRC today, mm. you'll find an SRC chairperson who is 32 years old. Mm. And they always have these miniature courses mm. just to keep them on campus. Mm-hmm. When are you kept that one and a half just mm-hmm. to be like, look, I'm not going to go home. For sure. I have to stay at Teflu. I also want to give a shout out to Teflop. Um, as I as I grow, as I meet people, I realize so many legends. Because we speak about Forte. You know, about Robert Mugabe went there. I think about Tato Mandela went there at yeah, some point. Yeah, yeah. I don't think enough spotlight is shone on, on Teflop and how many amazing politicians, uh, I think religious leaders, mm. uh, business people mm. uh, went to Teflop. So mm. thank you for raising that. When you say God spoke to you, for some of us who maybe are not rooted in our faith, who don't understand what this means, can you maybe describe what is it? Is it a, is it a dream? Are you sitting in class and someone's like, hey, Kenneth, come on, boy. What, what's happening for you to be able to explain to people, God is speaking to me and that's what I heard? It's an inner voice. Mm. You have a voice within, either you hear the voice literally or an impression, strong impression comes upon you. Yeah. Yeah, mostly with me is either or a very strong impression. Mm. You just know I have to do this. Or you just hear a voice, still yeah. voice within you. You never thought of becoming a police officer like your father? <laughs> no. Never? No, 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 no. And your exposure, you said you, you grew up in a space with white mm. people. Mm. How has that shaped? How did that shape your childhood? Maybe how, how has it shaped even your outlook today? Were you exposed to racism? Were you exposed to good white people to a point where you're like, no, man, these guys are not all the same? There is one experience I'll never forget that was the most painful Mm. growing up. Uh, There would be a lot of sporting activities there, and sometimes they would allow people from our community to come and watch, you know, from a distance, but you watch. The white people engaging, but Mm. you must go to the back. Boxing, yeah, yeah, yeah. This specific day, there was a boy, they say he was about seven years old. Mm. The father must have told him to come to my father Mm. and kick him. So I watched that boy and I heard my father say to him, Klein basi that a seer. Klein basi muniso maki. Small small bus, small bus. Mm. This is so. Mm. Small bus. Don't do that. Yeah. And the father, the family would laugh. And the father would say, Scop on VR. Kick him again. You go kick my father and then go back. I felt like giving the boy a take five. We know what take five is. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, I was seen in an area where I would have been arrested immediately. Mm. And my father used to say to us children, please listen to me. For the sake of your future, internalize 
what you are seeing and experiencing. People your age have lost their lives, but you still have good lives ahead of you. So just be, have endurance for the sake of your great future, because you're going to have children that you would wish to be something in life. Yeah. It says, I'm enduring this for your sakes. It's not nice. I feel the pain, but I'm enduring this for your sakes. Mm. I don't want to go to prison so that you'll have you'll grow up without a father. Yeah. And I also don't want you to go to prison and mess up your future. So it was painful, but uh, we took our father's advice. Did it make you hate white people at that time? Fortunately not. Okay. My, my father spoke against hatred. Mm. He said, never hate people in life. Mm. We were never taught to hate. And uh, when I became a Christian, I started reading the scriptures. I also saw that we were not meant to hate. Yeah. So I always fight hatred. And in our church, many times I tell our guys, you are not allowed to hate. Yeah. If you call yourself a Christian, it does not matter what you go through. Yeah. You are not allowed to hate. Are, are you supposed to forgive? Or let, so the one part is don't hate. Mm. The other part is forgive. Correct. Are, are we supposed to forgive? In the same way, we're not supposed to hate. We are supposed to forgive. If you don't forgive, hatred, hatred becomes, it grows to bitterness. Okay. And bitterness can become a cancer. Yeah. And the, the, the worrying thing is that if you hate, the person you hate doesn't feel the pain. Mm. The person who you hate is not going to um, have their future affected by your hatred. Yeah. But your hatred is going to affect you Consumes as a person. You. Consumes you. Yeah. Yeah. So I've made a choice. It doesn't matter how difficult things become. I refuse to hate. And I, I'm glad my son is here. I can yeah. tell you. I refuse to hate. And in our church, I tell people, fight hatred. Yeah. Don't hate. Shout out to Joshua as well. Um, your father spoke about internalizing. And we've got the history that we have in this country. We've had political prisoners. We've had young guys like O Solomon Mashlangu dying. We've had a Chris Hani assassinated. We've had a Stephen Bantubigo killed. Robert Subugwe dying in prison, etc. Uh, no, not dying in prison, dying, but after being isolated in prison and the like. In retrospect, with your wisdom now, for a young person who is at the crossroad of, I have seen injustice. I've seen my father be kicked. By a young boy, they're laughing. I've seen maybe the current government doing something that is corrupt. I've seen someone overseas doing something wrong. How does a young person decide between I will internalize for my future and for my children's future? Or I will actually fight. I will actually go to prison. I will sacrifice my life, maybe the lives of my children. How do you, how do you make that decision? You, you know, you have to think firstly about your own children, mm. okay? Uh, when the scriptures say, love your neighbor as yourself, it means you must love yourself first. Okay. You cannot love your neighbor. If you don't love yourself. If you don't love yourself. Mm. And there are things in life that only God can help us to achieve. Mm. Without him, when you are hated, when you are mocked, when you are persecuted, when people are unjustly, uh, treating you, mm. naturally, you have to react the way people do. Yeah. But if you have a goal in life uh, to contribute to make society a better society, mm. and knowing that one of the things I must overcome is hatred, yeah. uh, the Lord is able to help you. So when you see your parents suffer, there is something called self-discipline and restraint. Mm. Now, many of our young people are not taught about self-discipline. Correct. They are not taught to restrain themselves. And these are the things that I learned early in life. Mm. That uh, mm. you don't just burst and do and be emotional, you know. Yeah, yeah you internalize. It's, it's painful, but you hold yourself and say, I'm not going to allow this to deny me from reaching my goal. Mm. That is my goal. I want a better future 
for me and my children. I want a better future for my grandchildren. Mm. So there are things that if I allow them, they will spoil that greater future. So I advise young people <coughs> who have seen their parents treated unfairly, who have lost their loved ones, yeah. and say to them, you do not want this kind of suffering in your family, like you losing your parents mm. to be perpetuated. Yeah. I do not want my children to lose their father as I lost my father mm. when I reacted, when there was unjust injustice and unfairness. Yeah. So I think it is worth advising our young people Think about the future. Now, one of the things that concerns me is to live in a South Africa where 30% pass is allowed. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, I want to change that. I want to change that. Mm -hmm. I heard a, a French economist saying, Africans must remain poor. Mm -hmm. Everything possible must be done to keep Africans poor. Mm -hmm. And he even said, um, the West would rather, would rather go to war than allow Africans to develop. Because if they develop themselves, mm -hmm. then the standard of the West is going to drop. Correct. That's what he says. Correct. So I said, no, I want to see the standard drop. I am tired of seeing African leaders with begging bowls, mm. going to a continent that doesn't have minerals. Yeah. This has to change. Correct. Okay. So now, when I have a vision and a goal like this, of wanting to see one day Europeans, the French people, yeah. come into Africa to ask for her assistance. To ask for aid. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. It is possible. Okay. Yeah. So I'm striving towards that. So now when you have a vision and when you have a goal that you believe will make your people and your children mm. be something better in life, you will not become as emotional as many of our people are. Obviously, if you think there's nothing to offer, you don't care, they can kill me anytime now, yeah. that's fine, I'll go. But if you have something you want to offer, it's not going to be that easy. i rather suffer yeah. the pain, internalize it, and then say, until I reach my goal, yeah. I'm not going to allow emotions to control me. You named your son Joshua, mm. Mishwe. Mm. Uh, I'm thinking of the reference of Joshua fighting the Battle of Jericho. Mm. I'm thinking of the story of Moses leading the Israelites from Egypt mm. and all the other uh, heroes in the Bible that fought. Mm. Uh, without making it too religious, uh, your opinion on some of those stories is that they, they were guided by God to do that. Mm in the sense that you're saying, internalize and just try and think, what is my vision, what is my plan? Mm. And think of your future. Mm. You believe there are certain people that are also led by God to say, no, you will unfortunately be one of the soldiers mm. and carry mm. some of the weight for the people. Mm. Do you mm. believe in that as well? Well, I, I believe that our callings are different. Sure. Yeah, some are just called to, to assist yeah. those who want to do something. And some are called to do something. Okay. And I'm called, I believe I'm called to be one of those who do something. Okay. And I said to our people, uh, in both in the party and in the church, mm. that there are things I want to see before I die. Mm. All right? And uh, I've made an agreement with God. Yes. Yeah. That I'm not going to die until so, I've seen one, two, three. All right? So there is something I'm living towards. Yeah. I'm living for. And uh, I want... One day, South Africa will have textbooks, history books, about what this man has done. This man being the good reverend? <laughs> yes, sir. I love it. Uh, I know we're jumping and I apologize because I want to go back to Turf Loop uh, and your lecturer friend saying, Excel, Baba, finish, finish this thing that you're doing. Mm. I'm sorry for jumping. Okay. Uh, how, do we, how do we fix this 30% pass rate? How do we fix it? Because I'd like to think, I don't know, <laughs> but to try and defend which I, I don't like doing as well. The ANC government, Umamu Enji, Mutsecha, and other people, their rationale might be some of these kids are not going to be academic. They might become sports stars, entertainers. They might go into business. Let's just get them out of this machine called the school so they'll get 30%. The ones that want to become doctors, engineers, lawyers, their requirements for tertiary education is still at a high level. It's not like tertiary says if you get 30%, you can go become a doctor. 
But for these ones at the bottom, because they're gonna have, they're gonna keep repeating school. So how do you fix that? What is the solution for that? Uh, do we increase the pass mark, or do we maybe, if you're getting thirties and we've tried our best, reroute so that you can get to a space where you can get good marks in a in a, another skill? You, you know, there are um, one of the mistakes that I think the current government has made mm. is to throw the baby with the bathwater. They just decided to cut off any links with the previous regime. Mm. All right. Um, the apartheid government. Yeah. In every negative, you can find a positive. Correct. In every negative. There is no human being who does not have pos positive traits. Mm. No, not one. Not Correct. one. Not one. Um, <clears throat> I was told that the, our founding president, Nelson Mandela, mm. wanted to have some national party ministers in their first government. Yeah. All right. Why? Because he acknowledged the fact that guys... We don't know much about government. Yes. We know how to fight. We know how to shoot. We know how to throw stones, but we don't know much about government. Yeah. So he said, um, I'm told that for the sake of our future, mm. let us allow some of these guys to mentor our guys mm. so that when it is their turn to take over the steering wheel, they'll know what to do. They know what they're doing. And obviously, some of them know it's our time to eat. They didn't want that. It's our time to eat. You know that? It's our time to eat. But uh, he insisted mm. that when it comes to Minister of Finance, the incumbent, who was Derek Keyes, mm. the incumbent has to carry on yeah. with Trevor Manuel as his understudy. Mm. Trevor Manuel became one of the best finance ministers we've ever had. And he did not become the best because from the bush he became the finance minister. Sure. He, right. he was an apprentice. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. So they declined to do something like that. Yeah. Okay. Because for them it is okay for young people to have 30% and then go into entertainment. Mm. You know, every responsible parent must want to leave an inheritance for his children. With entertainment, you... you, you Okay, you don't leave a legacy and an and, and inheritance for your children. So I think if we want to change in 30%, and it is going to change and it must change, we must get our children to compete with children in Europe, yes. in Asia, and so on. Yes. Our children don't compute, compete, yes. they are at the bottom. Correct. And it is the leadership that they place them there at the bottom. I refuse to believe. Mm that black children are inferior. Yes. But in South Africa, they are treated. We've accepted it. Okay. Now, let me tell you an interesting story about what happened with my one of my children. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me use the two girls. The first one, uh, in the 80s, late 80s, they went to Benoni High School. Mm -hmm. It was a middle school school. And uh, their uniform was Black blazers with mustard stripes. Mm. They were ugly. <laughs> okay. Ugly. <clears throat> so my daughter, before the week was over, yes. saw a white boy with a beautiful white velvet blazer. Mm. And uh, she just said, this is not fair. Why is this boy wearing this Nice, beautiful, velvet blazer. And we are wearing this ugly yes. black with master stripes blazers. Mm. And they said to her, he is an achiever. Yes. At the same school. At, At the, the same school. school. Yeah. I think Vusi Tembeguayo and uh, there's a friend of mine as well, uh, Dominic Haubepe, who went to Penoni High. Mm. Sorry. He said, they said he's an achiever. She said, but I also want it. Mm. She's black. That's what they're thinking. Yes. Okay. Now, one of the scriptures that I'm, I must tell you that uh, I used at home to help our children. That's why you, you will not hear our children talking much about apartheid. Mm. Okay. I do not want to focus the past. I want to move forward. Okay. 
Now, one of the scriptures that has been a favorite in, in our home that our children would know from early in life is Philippians 4.13. It's which says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm-hmm. So they grew up with that. Yeah. I can do all things yes. through Christ who strengthens me. They, I'm disadvantaged. I can't do this. I can't do this. That's not part of their language. Okay. It's not their language. Okay. So this girl came back from school. Hey, Dad. Uh, no, let me be something important. When she said, I also want that blazer. Mm. Others said to her, you can't get it. Mm. You are black. No black person ever wants that blazer. So my, my daughter comes home, Dad, Dad, I saw this boy with a white velvet blazer. And when I said, I want it also, they said, no, I can't get it because I'm black. Mm. My response was, do you want it? Mm. Yeah, I want it. I said, okay. Mm. If they say black person, will not. that's not wear that blazer. You can be the first one. Sure. Now, this is a seed that parents must plant in their children. Rather than, the, no, it's because of apartheid and all. No, 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 and no. just no. accept. They just mediocrity. Accept. They accept mediocrity. That's yeah. a problem. They accept mediocrity. Yeah. So I said, my girl, if you want it, study hard. Yeah. Dad will help you okay. with your studies. You will get it. Yeah. She got it. Come on. Okay, okay Riff. She got it. Why? Because I believe I can do. Yes. All things. I do not want my children to think I can't do this because I'm black. Yes. Okay. My blackness will not stop me from attaining and achieving my goals. Mm. Not. I'm black, I know. I'm not I was not as privileged as others, but with this blackness of mine, I'll still achieve my goals. We need to elevate South Africa to our higher standard. We have to. Our kids need to elevate. And you're saying if we were to increase the pass mark, just that on its own, forces even a child getting 30% to be like, no, Mm. if I want to pass, I must get 50. So they push harder than they would have. But you must change the leadership first. Yeah. Otherwise, the leadership is the one that's going to discourage them. Yeah. It's going to say, no, you can't, you know, look at so-and-so. You can't be, be satisfied that at least you have some education. I want to protect some people because I know (laughs) some people need protection. Number one, the entertainment industry. (laughs) Uh, In terms of inheritance, just to protect them, not to not to counter. Uh, Look, we do have uh, people in entertainment that leave books, uh, uh, music, masters, and royalty. So, because some people might say, "No, the reference says there's no inheritance." Yeah, no, 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 you're right. You're right. You're right. Thank you. Thank you for raising that. No, no problem. Mm. And then the second thing is, um, we also, as we elevate our standards as a a nation Mm. need to look into the kids who are maybe not meant for an academic path to look for other paths outside of academics. I had two quick questions for you. Again, we're jumping. Before before you come to those questions. You know, uh, during apartheid there, there was what was called Ampach. School. Amper. Ambach. Ambach. Mm. Ambach School. Mm. Okay. That's where students were given trades. Skills. Skills. Mm. Some would learn to be electricians. Some would do like Malema, woodwork. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, he doesn't th- talk about woodwork anymore. Hey, Julia. <laughs> must go back to the woodwork. We, we have to. Yes. Okay. Because most of the children, when they come out of that, they at least had professions. Correct. They are not academics. They Correct. don't like, but at least they can use their hands. 100%. How many of our children today can use their hands? Mm. They can't. You, that's sick. why you see you see foreigners. They come from outside. The only thing they know is to use their hands. They employ our children. Yes. Because where they come from, they are taught yes. to use their hands. We we are taught wait for a grant. Mm. No, we, we have. Need, to, we need to fix that as well. No, definitely we need to fix that. Yeah. We need to fix that. Our children have been rendered useless mm. by the state. I believe definitely they've been rather useless. They they look down upon themselves. Mm. They undermine themselves. They develop slow self-esteem. Now, one of the things, you just see boys and girls walking the streets with a bottle of liquor. Mm. It breaks my heart. Yeah. 
Because you don't see white people doing that. You don't see Indians doing that. The people who are employing our children, the only thing they know is sex and liquor. I've said many times, if government would spend the time they, they, they would use the time they spend mm -hmm. in teaching children about sex, something that the parents should be teaching them, mm -hmm. teach them mathematics. Yeah. Mathematics can be enjoyable if you have the right teacher and the right Correct. attitude. Correct. Yeah. So if you say, no, our children, math literacy is enough for them, it's okay for them. That's not fair. Why are the Japanese children? You know, I saw a clip. Immediately, primary school children in Japan yes. cleaning their classrooms. Correct. I've oh. seen that. Clip. You have seen that? Yeah. Cleaning their classrooms. And after cleaning their classrooms, our government says children should not clean. They should not use their hands. They must just focus on their studies. Those children who have been cleaning their own classrooms, look at the results. They yeah. do better than ours. Academically, and they also build. Because uh -huh. Japan is an industrial country. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We used to clean our schools back in the day. We used to. We used to get. We used to clean our schools. Well, I wasn't there, but I know. Mm. We used to clean our schools. We also used to have gardens. So sure. the kids in the morning would make sure they water the gardens, they weed them, they clean uh -huh. the classroom. Uh -huh. And those those things teach you to what you're saying, discipline, mm. loving yourself. Mm -hmm. And then outside of that, you're not only focusing on brain work, which mm. you've already set a low standard. It's mm -hmm. also... You're not, you're not only a head, mm. you also have arms and hands. You Correct. also have legs and you can use Correct. them as well. Our education must... Focus on the total person, yes. not just the brain, the yes. total person. This person must be able to use their hands. This person must be able to use their feet. This person must not say, I'm going to bed hungry today yes. while they have hands. Correct. Make a plan. Teach them to make a plan. Yes. Now, if you teach the children to have their own gardens when they grow up, at home, they do the same. Yes. If mom and dad are not working, is this a, is a child that has planted vegetables, cabbage, spinach, and so on, yeah. that can put it on in front of their parents. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's not happening today. My two quick questions. Uh, we may not get a chance. I may not get a chance to ask them. Number one, you speak about Nelson Mandela's government when he came in in 1994 under the ANC that had national party ministers that were still mm. part of the cabinet. Mm. There have been rumors, and it's, I'm not asking you to confirm or not, but just any thoughts you have. Mm. There have been rumors that while those ministers were there, they made sure that they, they ate. Those same white apartheid mm. ministers, they mm. ate and they created a, a ground so that it would be difficult once they left. A lot of them were accused of looting land and those kind of things. And then after that one, it's uh, your thoughts on, on Utata, the late uh, Nelson Mandela, um, and what impact maybe he had on you? I had great respect for that man. Mm. That man knew what, how to get things from those he knew didn't love him. <laughs> Self-discipline. Yeah. Even though I know this person doesn't like me, yes. but I want what he has. Yeah. So I should not allow his attitude, negative attitude, his hatred, mm -hmm. undermining me to block me from getting what I want that he has. Yes. And that's one of the things I've learned from him. That's very important. That's very important. Yeah. That's very important. I want something out of that man. That so, doesn't like me. Uh, he doesn't like me, but I want, he has something. I have to charm him. Correct. Give me that thing. Correct. And he was good at that. Mm. How many schools did he get uh, business, white businesses to, to build? Yeah. Okay, he'll go to them. And they would say, who can say no to Nelson Mandela? <laughs> All right. So, because he was looking at the welfare of his children. Yeah. What's happening now? Make promises, loot, 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 as if there's no tomorrow. Yes. Still, and they don't think about leaving something for their own grandkids. grandkids right. Just right. want for themselves. Yeah. This attitude must change. So I, I would not dispute that there were such ministers. Mm. Some of them obviously were angry uh, to see what was happening. Mm. Some of them were not uh, were upset that um, they have a contribution to make. Mm. And that contribution is resisted. Yeah. It's not wanted. Correct. So if they don't want my contribution, I'll also take as much from them as I can. Yeah. Yeah. We, we might potentially, maybe if the story ever breaks, we might see something similar at ESCOM. We've lost a lot of really great white engineers. Mm. And we don't know, because some of them really wanted to pass on the skills they Correct. wanted to teach and they mm. got to resistance. Mm. And if there were ever any of them who intentionally maybe sabotaged, who intentionally made sure that they, we, we never know. Yeah. Um, and it's very sad mm. that we have that situation. Back to Tiflup. 
sorry, we went on a little detour. So your lecturer friend tells you, Ute, did God tell you to come to Bible school now? And it made you think twice. Yeah. So you went back to finish your teaching studies? Correct. What I happens there after? I went back to finish and then I started teaching in 76. Okay. 76 was a big year. Yeah. January, I taught only for three months. January, February, March. March, I resigned. I felt this is not really what I want to do. Yeah. This is not my calling. Do you remember what you were teaching? I was teaching, believe it or not, okay, it was general science, okay. agriculture, and Africans. That's nice. <laughs> Pele, you're the black boy from Pretoria West. You must be able to prod the biki. Yeah. Eh? I thought, I thought, yeah. Okay. Well, sorry, and biblical studies. And biblical studies. Mm -hmm. Which was my favorite subject. The school that you taught at? Mm -hmm. It was in Bochum. You don't remember the name? Mm, I, I'll, I'll, I'll remember. Okay. I'll come back to that, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, G.H. France High School. G.H. France. Yeah, G.H. France. Yeah. God comes back to you in the inner voice. He's like, no, Baba. Mm. This is not the place. I, I was not finding pleasure. Yeah. I was not enjoying myself. Whatever you do, you need to enjoy yourself. Yes. I was not enjoying myself. Um, I, find, I found pleasure in preaching. Yes. When I see people reconciled with God, people, young people come to the Lord, seeing lives change, I said, I like this. Yeah. I like this. So I left 31st of uh, March, 76. Mm. And I joined a man that you must have heard about, Reinhard Bonke and Christ for Nations. Mm. I went with him, I traveled with him, 76. We went to June 76. We went to... Uh, the DRC. Mm. Okay, the DRC. June 76 was when things were burning in this country. Yeah. No, no, no. Sorry, I'm making a mistake. We went to Namibia. 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 76 okay. went to Namibia. Uh, DRC was 86. Okay. You know, when the Hector Peterson appeared in the uh, Daily Mail, mm. front page, I was in Namibia. And uh, a guy who introduced himself as uh, from Swapo came with a newspaper to me. Mm. And he said, can you see what white people are doing to your people mm. in South Africa? Swapo is the leading party in Namibia. Yeah, yeah. That we just lost, sorry, recently, we just lost the president. The president, yeah. Uh, Hage Kaingo. Mm. Uh, whenever this episode drops, just to send our condolences and sympathies to the people of Namibia sure. and, and all his loved ones as well. Sure, sure. He was, he was under Swapo as well. Yeah, he was yeah. under Swapo, yeah. yeah. So this guy came with this newspaper and said, look, you are with, you are with white people here. Mm -hmm. And look what the white people are doing to your people at home. Yeah. Uh, why? He demanded an answer. Why? Are you betraying your people? Yeah. I had to think quickly. Mm -hmm. And then I said to him, the white people I'm working with here are different from those that are doing this to my people. Yeah. They were, I said, I'm working with Germans. Mm. Those, we are talking about Africaners, and I can tell you what this man has done that has shown me that he's different from the others. Yeah. Right? So I, I, I told him a few stories about what that man was doing and uh, how he was treating black people, mm. how in his house... He would give you the same utensil. Yeah. And uh, sometimes uh, his house was raided by the police when the neighbors would complain and say, uh, we saw black people in that house. Mm. And uh, he would tell us. They would come and say, Ella su kafur scottles. Kafur scottles. And we say, there is no kafur here. No, no, no. We hear that there was kafurs because he refused to associate the word kafur with black. Yeah. So if you wanted to know something about the black person and you would use the word kafir, it's out. It's out. It's like, I don't know who you're talking about. No, I don't know who you're talking about. So no, no, I've never had a kafir. I don't have kafir. Yeah. It would have been a different thing if they said black people. You would have to tell the truth. Sure. Yeah, but because they said kafir, no. Yeah. So he was a man, but maybe let me tell you one story again. Mm -hmm. As a student, 1974, we had, we had conferences as mm -hmm. students, okay? In one of the conferences, we invited him 
this bonke mm. to come and be a speaker in Bushbuck Ridge. Yes. There were three peop- black people who needed to come back home to Joweak. Mm. Okay. That time it was my fiancé, the lady I married later on, myself, and a gentleman we also lost by the name of Israel Malele. Mm. So we asked for a lift, this man. This one. He said, no problem. So he gave us a lift. Mm. When we came to Middleburg, he said, I'm hungry. Are you not hungry? No, we are all hungry. We want steak. <laughs> so we stopped at Middleburg, yeah. at the roadhouse. He ordered four plates of steak. Mm. It could have been five minutes before the food was served. The manager walked out, came towards our car, looked, and he saw one white man and three black people. Mm. So he went back and told one of the waiters, go and tell the bus that uh, I apologize, the food will be later because I'm still getting proper utensils for the blacks in the car. Mm. So the food will be late. So the guy came, he told Pastor Bonga that, and Bonga said, if my people, he calls us his people, Mm. if my people will not eat from the same plate I'm eating, I'm not interested in eating here, Tell your, your your boss to eat all that steak. We are gone. Started the car. We left. Now we are university students. Yeah. We look at this white man, and you know when we went back to to TAF, we say, "Hey, this man did one to three. Mm. He was invited to TAF when other white people were not wanted." Yeah. So it was seventy four. So in seventy six, when I was there, I related the story. Mm. This is one of the stories that I related that I've been in his house. We use the same plates, yes. the same utensils, everything the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you ever sleep in his house? Well, there was never a need. But if there was a need, I'm sure you'd have given me one of his bedrooms. Trevor Noah, Trevor Noah speaks about how prejudice doesn't hold up well against contact. And what that means is most of the people who are racist, tribalist, xenophobic, whatever you want to call it, they haven't spent time with the people that they claim to hate Mm. to a point where once you start spending time with those people, you'll realize number one, they're not all the same. True. Number two, you'll start understanding their story. And I can just imagine because I sometimes have to explain even on social media in 2024, why I have white friends to black people. I, we left the township when I was five years old and I went to model C schools, Newcastle high, Newcastle senior primary, Newcastle junior primary and a colored school called Chelmsford. And I have to explain that I grew up with white people. I know many racist white people and probably because I was in those spaces, I would probably experience more racism than a child in the township. But in the same breath, I experienced so much kindness from white people that had nothing to gain Mm. from giving me a lift, feeding me, Mm. giving me a bursary, Mm. um, being my friend, Mm. coming to sleep over at my house as a white boy. I'm coming to, I'm visiting my friend. To a point where you get older and you have to now think when you're part of activism and they're like all these whites you're like it can't be all of them you know you are saying something very important and i'm glad that you have experienced that mm. it, it is wrong to paint all people with the same brush yes to paint all white people like white people who say on says alma Zotis, we are thieves mm. and all it's unfair yeah to paint everybody they look at you and they're like your government is stealing you, you black people that? are corrupt. You're looting the country. Yeah, no, no, no. It's unfair. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> let me tell you maybe the last story with this bonke. Yes. 77, we go to Giani for a crusade. Limpopo. Yeah, in Limpopo. Yeah. Go to Giani, Kazangulu. It was still uh, in Kazangulu. Mm-hmm. When preparations were made for us to go there, uh, white people invite him to stay with them in town. He refuses and says, I'm going to stay with my people, yeah. with my team. Yeah. All right? We were four that in, in that in that team, four. In the township, they give us a forum house. Mm. Bonke takes one. My wife and I takes another. Mm. And 
we have a, another man, Kolisang, yeah. takes the third one, and the uh, the room that's left becomes our kitchen and dining room. Yeah. Okay. People in the township who had never seen a white man sleep in a township. <laughs> in the mornings, the house would be surrounded, people peeping through the windows. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So as a result, there were many people who attended the meetings. Yes. Some of them not necessarily to hear what sure. is being said, but to see this white man. Who is this white man Who's that sleeps in the township? In a township, yeah. you know? So that opened the hearts of the people, and people realized that they are not the same. Correct. They are good people in every tribe. Yeah. And they are bad people in every tribe. Yeah. So for us to say black people cannot uh, discriminate, it's only white people are discriminating. Black people cannot, uh, some people even say, um, when they talk about human rights, black people cannot, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Is it not, cannot be racist? Some because, say because black they, people cannot be racist. Yeah. Now, I mean, that's nonsense. You Racists are among all classes of people on earth. It's a choice. In the midst of suffering and pain, you can choose not to be a racist. I chose. And my children have chosen also. Yeah. And as a result, they have friends in different cultural groups. Yeah. But you have those who have limited themselves Correct. only to duckies. Why? Because... Everybody else is a racist. You have people who say Indians, all Indians are crooks. Yeah. I know Indians who are honest people, you yeah. see. So so I don't think it is fair to paint everybody with the same brush. Yeah. Uh, I gave a shout out to Limpopo. We have to give a shout out to Mpumalanga because of Pushpak Ridge and Middleburg. <laughs> uh, Iswapo uh, got in independence for Namibia in 1990. So I can imagine in 70, you said 74. Yeah. That, 76, that 76. 76. Mm. That person, or 76, mm. yes. Mm. That person was showing you Hector Peterson because we had the yeah. youth uprising mm. Mm. with Afrikaans being forced as a language of instruction mm. that, that he would be angry mm. because at that time Namibia wasn't uh, free. June 76, you're in Namibia, um, you start apprenticing as a, as a, as a pastor with Pastor Wonke. Yeah. And yeah. Mm. What, what happens from there? How do we move from there to a point where you're like, no, I think... I think God is now saying I need to get into politics and government. You know, I hated politics. Mm. And one of the reasons I hated politics was, okay, maybe two reasons. The first reason was because that's what was taught in my church, mm. in the AFM church. Okay. I was in the same church as Frank Chikani. Hey. So Frank Chikani was persecuted in the church. Yeah. And there was a time when I thought, Frank should not be involved in politics, mm. okay? For peace sake, should not be involved in politics. Yeah. But as a person who liked to read the Bible, I made personal discoveries. Mm. I realized from reading the Bible that teaching that Christians should not be involved in politics was wrong. Yeah. So I got one scripture after the other. That pointed me to politics. That pointed me to politics. Until finally I felt I have to be a contributor. Yeah. Um, I, I felt the Lord speak to me. Um, it was uh, 1992. Okay, 1992. Yes. The Lord gave a very strong impression to me that when the constitution of South Africa is written. Um, there must be people of God there. There must be Christians there because that time Christians it was a no-go area for us. All right? Stay away from politics. Stay away from politics. It will corrupt you. Mm. So I felt like the constitution is going to be drafted and that constitution is going to affect me. Yes, It's going to bind me. Mm. So I must have a voice also uh, that will represent my feelings, my beliefs, yeah. my religious convictions, and so on. So I wrote a letter. Those days, there were no computers, you know that. So yeah. I wrote a letter to my leadership, IFCC, IFCC, mm. uh, which is an acronym for uh, Independent International Fellowship of Christian Churches. Mm. We had five leaders there. I wrote a letter to them and said, I believe that God wants the church to be represented mm. when the constitution is written. Yeah. 
I got two responses. Mm. The first one was from Pastor Ray McCauley, yes. who is well, well known. Ray McCauley said, don't worry about that. We'll make sure that it happens. Mm. And the second response was from the late Ed Raybert. Mm. He said, we are going to have a summit for all the churches to discuss this very issue you are raising so that uh, our voice is also represented mm. when the constitution is drafted. Yes. It did not happen. Until the pressure in me increased. <laughs> if nobody is doing it, you yeah. do something. Yeah. I started asking around. I mean, I was not involved in politics. I was not interested in politics. How can one be there? Yes. They said the only way you can be there is to have a political party. I want to stop you there. Sorry, Rev. A lot of people don't know the, the etymology of the term politics. It's from Greek polis, which is a, a city, so a metropolis, the polis. And polis or politics in how it uh, graduated to become the word we know today. Mm. From Greek to old Lat uh, Lat to Latin and, and French and English is about running the affairs of the city. Mm. It is not about shouting at each other or hate mm -hmm. or what. what. It, is, it is just at its most basic level. And I can only imagine if you are reading the Bible, this idea of, look, the running of the affairs of any city, including Jesus Christ being persecuted, it had something to do with politics. Correct. Uh, Jesus himself could arguably have been some type of an activist mm. uh, to the people that were governing at mm. the time. Mm. So I just wanted people to know that when we speak politics, we're speaking about the running of the affairs of a city or an, or an area. Or a science of governance. Yes. A science of governance. Science of governance. Yeah. Yeah. The question is who qualifies yes. to govern. Yes. Okay. Now, unfortunately, many Christians have disqualified themselves. Correct. And I was, I was among them until I discovered from the scripture <clears throat> that that's a mistake. Yes. And over the years, in Bible schools, Bible colleges, mm. people have been trained to stay out of politics. Yeah. Um, it has to change. Mm. And I think... In the next few years, that is going to change as our influence also in society increases. Yeah. It's going to change when people can see the importance of having people with who are self-disciplined, mm. who have a moral compass, mm. people who believe in righteousness mm. and justice, that when they are given the mandate, what they can do. And I'm hoping to be part of the team yes. that will represent people with a higher moral standards we impose upon ourselves as we look at what is expected of us based on scripture. That people will see a difference, that these people can be trusted with money. Yeah. These people can be trusted with the resources. They will not think about themselves, but they will think about meeting the needs of other people. Yeah. All right. I saw something in a, a city called Aziz mm. in Brazil, 96. Yeah. And that in a way, um, caused me to want to see this happen in my country, South Africa. Okay, three things. Firstly, we were invited there for church meetings. Yeah. Now, between the church meeting and our residence was a massive city park. Meetings would go until 12 midnight, even until 1 a.m. Yeah. So when we drive back home at night, we were shocked to see children and their mothers in the park mm. and we don't see a man. Mm. All right. Now, coming from Joburg, when we saw that, the, the question that we all asked was, is this not dangerous? Yeah. Won't they be raped? Yeah. And our host said, not here. Children and women are not raped in Aziz. Yeah. They said, no, rapists, would go to Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, yeah. and other cities, Brazil but not here. Places. Mm. Yeah, but not here. Why not here? They say here, you, you if you are caught, you'll be given such a hiding that you'll not want to do it again. So punishment mm. is necessary if you want to bring law and order. Mm. And the word punishment is not used in South Africa. Mm. It's like it's a swear word. Yes. But it is necessary. Punishment, if you know you are going to be punished, mm. You think twice before you go ahead with what you want to do. Yes. But if you know you're going to get away with it. So that was the first thing that shocked us. That there are places on earth yes. 
where 12 o'clock midnight a woman can be in the streets without be fearing they would be raped. And be safe. And be safe. Yeah. I saw it with my eyes. Mm. The second thing, one Saturday morning, um, a man came with a push me before I go car. <laughs> okay. Skoro koro, ne? Yeah. He parked his car next to our residence. Mm. Across the residence was a, a tavern. Yeah. The man left the car idling, crossed the road into the tavern. Mm. I looked at my watch about 25 minutes. Yeah. The man was drinking. The car was idling in front of us. Yeah. So we asked our host, won't this car be stolen? Yeah. And he said, cars are not stolen in Aziz. Not in Aziz. Not in Aziz. Then he asked us, are cars stolen in Joburg? He has never been to Joburg. <laughs> A car stolen in Joburg? Mm. I said, many people in Joburg use a steering wheel lock called yes. Gorilla. I remember Gorilla. Gorilla, gorilla ne? Yeah. yeah. See? I, 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 where we come from, they steal the car and the Gorilla. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay? They steal Elephant Alice. That's where I come from. Yeah. Okay. But the second thing was, there is a place on earth where cars are not stolen. Yes. You can leave your car idling with a key in the ignition. Yeah. Nobody will touch it. When I said that, I said, Lord, help me. I want to see this in my country, South yes. Africa. But the third thing, before we left, the day before we left, mm -hmm. the mayor who knew I was an MP invited us yes. for a luncheon. Okay, he gave a speech, as politicians always do that. And after the speech, he said, anybody who wants to ask a question, you may ask. I raised my hand. I asked whether they had poor people in Nazis. He said, sure, we do. Why do you ask such a question? I said, because I've never seen a beggar since I came here. Mm. I've never seen anybody in the street and in the uh, traffic lights uh, begging for money. Yeah. I've never seen somebody who looked like they sleep under the bridge yeah. or somewhere outside, you know? And he said, no, we do have poor people. He said, but we have a center where we keep street people maximum 14 days mm. and he said during those 14 days we trace the family of that person we found in the street because we've we operate from the premise that nobody will end up in the street if everything is okay at home yes so when we find this person find their family we bring in either a social workers or a psychologist yes sit with them and find where the problem is. If it's a problem of relations, they find counseling. Yes. All right? If it's a problem of poverty, he says the city takes responsibility of looking after that family until we find a job for that mm -hmm. person. No poor person in the street, no beggar in the street corners because they look, they are building families. Yeah. They don't talk about human rights more than families. In South Africa, we have taken the family out of the equation. Correct. It is just my rights. Correct. I'm more important than everybody else. Women's rights, men's rights, children's rights. We never speak about family rights. Actually, you don't even men's rights. Yeah, there, there, are, no, there, are, no, there, there are no men's rights. <laughs> There are no men's rights. Women's rights and children's rights. It's women's rights and children's rights. But we don't put the family first. And this must change. Yeah. If we want to have a, a, a society where children grow up with father and mother, I still believe yeah. father, father, mother, mother does not work. Hey, you're jumping. I was waiting for those controversial <laughs> ones later. But please continue. Really. Okay. No. A, a proper family. <laughs> father, father, mother, mother. According hey, to the one. That? No, no. We have to go back to the basics. Yeah. Who started family? Where do we come from? There is a creator. Whether we like it or not, we don't. We have not evolved from monkeys. Mm -hmm. Now, and when people who say uh, we have evolved from monkeys, when you call them educated monkeys, they are offended. You can't call me an educated monkey. I don't come out of a monkey. That is true. People that created. believe in evolution would be offended if you call them an educated monkey Correct. or chimpanzee. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Why, why are they offended? Because not one of us come from, out of, from monkeys. We were created in the likeness of God, in the image of God. Okay? So, 
because we believe that we are created wonderful. Mm. God did not make a mistake. You have a better nose than mine. I look at your nose, it's almost... I've got a really, got a really good nose. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking, Reverend. Please carry on. Okay, mine is broader. Okay, <laughs> mine is broader. And, uh, but yours is... But there was a reason why God allowed me to have such a nose. Mm. Okay, because whatever he does is perfect, it's good. I don't complain. I say, Father, there are some who must have noses like me, and I'm happy. Thank you. As long as I have life. Yes. I can achieve. I can have dreams. I can have visions. I can aspire to be anything in life with this nose that I have. Yes. Okay. So the family, I am what I am. Mm. I have not landed in hot water that affected my vision in life negatively. Mm. Why? Because I grew up in a family mm. where father and mother would tell the children the right thing to do. Yes. I trusted my parents more than any other person. Yeah. I know my father sometimes was too strict. Mm. When my father is a policeman, sometimes he would hit us boys for being naughty. He would sometimes put his boot here. Oh, you know, it's a policeman. Your neck. Yeah, you would do that. Yeah, I'm a po police also <laughs> have trauma, man. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. So he but, put his... <laughs> yeah. No, depending on what you did. If you sure. really made him angry, you would do that. Yeah. But after beating you, he let you know why he beat you up. Mm. He loves you. So yeah. I love you. I want you to be a better person in future. Speaking and punishment. Yeah. Mm. And today I thank God for the upbringing I got. Mm. Okay. The only thing I regret is that I, was, I never had the privilege of going to the army. When Pri I see... Privilege yeah. of going to the army. Yeah. It's a privilege, an opportunity, mm. privilege, opportunity of going to the army. When I see how disciplined some of these people are, mm. I, I think maybe I could have been better than I am today to learn the discipline. Yeah. Wake up at this time. Where did my trick? <clears throat> uh, our headmaster was obviously an Afrikaner. Mm. Um, very, very strict. Mm. Okay. There would be times when you do inspections. They would teach us when you are at home, when we are in your rooms, you don't leave your toothbrush in a mark. You don't put your mark on a washing rack. Mm. You don't leave your shoes. You don't leave your bed unprepared. Mm. We were in hostels that had one gate. So when it was a day for inspection, mm. uh, the principal would go ahead of us. Now I want Inmates, room one, come with me. Follow me. You come there. He said, okay, everybody stand next to their bed. Stand next to the bed. Open your locker. Open the locker. He finds a toothbrush in a mark. Mm -hmm. Get a hiding. Yeah. Look under your bed. Finds shoes under the Everything had its place. Yes. Everything. You get another one. Mm -hmm. You didn't put on your... Uh, you didn't prepare your bed properly mm. with a bedspread and another one. That's how we grew up. Yeah. And my wife would tell you, she never picked up my socks in the living room. Yeah. Never picked up my shoes in the living room. There's no socks Until in today, yeah. I know where everything belongs. Yeah. That's the training I got. All right. And obviously, I think maybe if I went to the army, I would have done much more than that. Sure. All right. So if my children, because I don't check on them, Joshua and so on, <laughs> I don't check on them, but they know yeah. everything must be where it should be. We need to bring that back. Thank you. Thank you. I want to go back to Aziz. When you speak about hidings, I'm totally trauma because I remember <laughs> getting caned in primary school, we, we outlawed uh, physical punishment at schools when I was in grade six, which is standard four. Mm. Uh, what year was that? 1997, I think. That was the last time I got a hiding mm. at school. I want to go back to Aziz, and again, I'm jumping because I want us to go back to 93, when you're like, no, I'm getting into politics, and you were told, if you want to get into politics, start a political yeah. party. We're going to go back there. Uh, we're deviating a bit. I'd like to share a few of my stories. When you spoke about the women and the children walking at night, late at night, midnight, one o'clock, I got to I, I got the privilege of visiting Dubai in the United Arab Emirates last year, 2023. And I'd heard stories about it, but I got to see it with my own eyes. Six, 10 year old children walking alone at midnight in the streets, safely, carrying a plastic bag, 
going to a shop. No one. Hmm. No one is scared. No one is worried. Same with women. To, to say that outside of Aziz, there are other places like that. Hmm. I visited South Korea in 2014, 2015. And I came back to tell South Africans this story and they still don't believe it to this day. That in South Korea, there are parts of South Korea where because there isn't a lot of parking available, people will leave their car unlocked with the key and the ignition so that if you need to, they'll park you in. So you'll park, there won't be space to park, they'll park their car behind you so you can't get out. But they leave their car unlocked with their key in so that you can move their car, move your car out, and then you can park their car and leave it. You tell South Africans today, they say you're lying. It happens today in South Korea. The potential of, there are spaces like that in the world today that are like Aziz. And I'm jumping and it's not fair. And may, maybe let's just attack it now before we go back. You've got the Vatican City, which as far as I know is one of the only, if not the only Christian, Roman Catholic, Christian states. We speak about Islamic states, mm. uh, the Middle East. The Vatican City is not very big. It's got a very small population. Mm. Would you want South Africa to be a Christian state, like an Islamic state? Outside of that, we speak about Aziz within a, a, a broader Brazil. Is there a part of South Africa that resembles an Aziz, uh, Dubai, South Korea, where you can say there's this town in South Africa where no one steals anything, where everyone is safe and, 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 or is the closest thing we have to that an estate and a complex? Uh, yeah, that's the closest we have. I mean, an estate, uh, many estates, children leave their bikes all over. I mean, like where I stay also, yeah. lying all over overnight. And yeah. they, the next day they find them. You know? But but this, we, we have to work towards yeah. ensuring that South Africa, the whole South Africa is like that. Yeah. So that when people visit South Africa, they will live with that memory. Yes. It becomes painful to hear of tourists who came here who were robbed, who were marked, who were killed, and so on. You know? So the image of South Africa is not good. Mm -hmm. And uh, to change that image, we need to start this year with the elections. Yeah. These guys who made South Africa what it is today, they just have to be replaced yeah. by people with a clearer vision of ensuring that South Africa becomes a better country than many countries in Europe. Yeah. And it can be done. And I pray that for as long as I live, mm -hmm. this goal will remain before me, this vision will remain before me, and that before you come to bury me, that South Africa will be almost like Aziz or South Korea. Yeah. It is possible. Let's go back, because <laughs> I've got questions around the Christian state. So you are told you need to start a political party. What do you do from there? This is 93. 93. Yeah. What do you do from there? How do we see the birth of the ACTP? Well, I talk to people about it. Yeah. Talk to my you'd, friends. You'd been preaching mm. during this time. You never went to Bible school. Mm -hmm. After you left teaching, you just decided to preach. And yeah. you've been preaching yeah. since then. Yeah. Until you were called to, to maybe potentially serve. All right. Maybe before I forget. 83, I went to Bible school. Okay. In America. They, they had a Christian community. Yeah. Okay. I was reminded of this. Uh, when you spoke about leaving cars with keys in the ignition, yes. where we were staying also because there were many students who came from outside America who yeah. did not have cars. Yeah. They would say, in case you have an emergency at night, leave keys there in the ignition so that if there's an emergency, somebody can go Just there, take a car and, and go and then put in petrol yeah. so that you don't get used to using people's cars with petrol and you don't yeah. put in anything you know? so we are taught that that cars are going to be left with keys inside hmm. in case you have an emergency and when you come back please show gratitude also yes. by putting something in there or leaving some dollars in sure. their car all right so i also saw that i had the privilege of using other people's cars hmm. because i didn't own a car in 1983. so south africa can do that yeah. if we can aspire to work towards that, all things are possible. But our people must be convinced Correct. it is possible. 1993, the birth of the ACTP. So some of my friends, obviously, they say, yeah, 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 yeah. Stay out of politics. Yeah. Stay out of politics. They didn't want to believe me. But I found guys. And what was interesting was that uh, uh, the charismatics were the most difficult. <laughs> they were the most difficult. Which is funny, right? It's ironic. 
Yeah. You'd assume that they're more flexible mm. than the orthodox. Yeah, they were the most difficult. Yeah. And I was introduced to guys in the Dutch Reformed Church, Methodists. Those were the guys I started with. Yeah. When I shared with them what we wanted to do, they said, okay. Okay. Well, the NGA Kerk, it would make sense. They've been involved in politics yeah. for years. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so that's that's how we started. Like actually that's something that I jump. Other charismatic said, no, we can start a movement yeah. that will conscientize yeah. Christians, but not a party. Yeah. So we started a movement, we're busy with that until somebody said, guys, you will not be there. What's needed is a party. Yeah. So when we said party, some reversed. And the few that remained, we got this guy from the uh, NGA Kerk and some Methodists that came together and said, no, we'll help you. And then they managed to register. I didn't even know anything about the IEC, where to register. The guy from the Dutch Reform was the one who registered the party on our behalf. That's, nice. That's how we started. That's and nice. uh, people thought, you are a, this is a joke, it's not going to happen. 100 <laughs> days. Before elections. 100 days before the 100, 94 elections. The 100, iconic 94 elections. 100 days before we were launched. And uh, by God's grace, we made it. Mm. I've been there since 94. Until today, here am I. You're serving in the, is it the fifth or the sixth? Sixth parliament. They keep calling you back. They're like, Xe, we like the song. The song must keep being sung. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, there are some obviously who are critical. We say, you have been there for so long, but we don't see tangible yes. things that the ACDP has done. Yes. Okay? I can mention one or two things that uh, many people will not debate against. Yeah. The first one, the th very thing that I wrote to my uh, leadership about the, why the church should be there yeah. was the issue of the constitution, okay? Um, we were divided into six groups. Members of parliament were divided into six groups. Yeah. These groups were going to focus on different themes, yeah. okay? Uh, we were to only two at that time, okay? My colleague uh, joined the group that looked at the question of uh, the Bill of Rights, yeah. okay? They only dealt with the Bill of Rights. Yeah. And then I looked at the, joined the group that answered the question, what form of state should South Africa be? Yeah. Who okay. was your colleague, sorry, if you don't mind me asking. Louis Green. Louis Green. Yeah, he's colored from okay. Cape Town. Yeah. Okay. My group was looking at the question, uh, what form of state should South Africa be? Now, in that group, we had uh, Ben uh, Heldenitz, Dr. Heldenitz from the National Party. Mm. We had uh, uh, Nzimande, Dr. Nzimande, who was the leading the ANC group in oh, that? Blade, yeah. yeah, Blade leading that group, and then we had uh, Saki Matozoma, who was his deputy. Hey, Saki's got money now. Yeah, hey, he's a but wealthy he man. He was serving there. <laughs> now yeah. he's got too much money. Yeah, yes. Saki was. Yeah. Now, the ANC, and the, as I said, the spokesperson was Blade in the Monday. Mm -hmm. He said the ANC wants South Africa to be a secular state, and that should be clearly spelled out in the constitution that South Africa is a secular state. And on behalf of the ACDP, I said, we want to be a constitutional state based on biblical principles, mm. okay? But I was not 100% sure what would be the implications of having South Africa declared a secular state. I just want to look up the definition of secular. Mm. Sometimes we use these words. <clears throat> Secular is an adjective not connected with religious or spiritual matters. Not mm. connected with religious or spiritual matters. Yeah. So I felt, because I'm not sure, I must ask a question. So we had consultants there who are university professor, professors. We had also among them Professor Yukoda. Mm. Uh, that time he was, he was at the University of Cape Town, mm. UCT. Great man said, Prof, what would be the implications of having a constitution that states that we are a secular state? Mm. And the prof said, I will answer your question in writing the following week. Indeed, the following week, he had a memorandum with him. Mm. In that memo, he said, three of the other things that were not defined, okay? Three of the other things that would happen if we have a constitution that states 
that were a secular state. Secular state. Uh, number one, there would be no reference to God in the Constitution. Two, state institutions would not be used for religious purposes. Thirdly, religious office bearers would not hold any office of state. Okay? I would have been excluded by that yeah, yeah. because I'm a religious office bearer. Yeah. But the one that concerned me the most was the second one. State institutions would not be used for religious purposes. Mm. I remembered that the majority of black charismatic churches those days did not have buildings of their own, yeah. which would mean they would be thrown out of the schools, mm. they would be thrown out of civic centers, sure. and those who pitch tent, that they pitch tents on land belonging to the, the state. City, city council. Be chased away. They would be chased away. So I decided to photocopy that memo and attach my memo explanation to that memo from mm. the professor. We circulated that in Cape Town. Mm. Say, hey, pastors, look at this. Sure. You that don't have buildings, you're going to be thrown out if you don't do anything about yeah. it. Then the question was asked, what are we going to do about this? I said, let's use the, the only language that government understands. I said, what language is that? Get to the streets. Yeah. Protest. protest. Okay. So that's what we did. Organize the protest march. Um, many people estimated 50,000 Christians who marched to parliament. Mm. Uh, but the secular media uh, said 30,000. Mm. But in any way, that was the biggest Christian march ever. I don't even want to imagine what that looked like. Yeah. Uh, massive. We are many. We are many, many, many in the city. 50,000. Yeah. We marched to parliament. Mm. And who received the memo? The current president, who was the chairperson of the Constitutional Assembly, mm. Sir Ramaphosa. And we were saying in the memo, we don't want to be a secular state. We want to be a nation under God. Mm. And when Brother Cyril, he was a bra my brother at the time, okay? Mm -hmm. When Brother Cyril saw the multitudes, yes. I'm told he's prevailed on the ANC. Guys, you don't want the church to turn against you. Mm. We need the voice and the votes of people in the church. Yeah. So let's drop this secular state. So people who say, what has the ACDP done? There is no weird secular state. I've heard a number of people say we're a secular state. <laughs> but you won't find those words anyway. in the Because of what ACDP has done for them. Thank you. That's the one, impo one important one. Okay. Mm -hmm. The second one. 2020. Oh, those are big years that you're giving us now. Yeah. 2020. The world changed after 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when we were told that uh, we have this COVID and because of this COVID um, there is going to be a lockdown. Um, initially, even before they spoke about the lockdown, mm. the president said, nobody will be forced to take the vaccine. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. Nobody will be forced to take the vaccine. Correct. Along the way, they decided, no, there must be mandatory vaccinations mm. in the country. I stood up in parliament. I said to the president, God wants everybody to be saved. Yeah. And yet, he does not impose his salvation on everybody. He gives human beings a choice. choice yeah. Free will. Free will. Yeah. Okay? I said, it would be wrong for you, for government to do what even God is not doing. Mm. People must have a choice. Mm. Nobody must be forced. Those who don't want it, they must not be forced. Yeah. And those who want it should take it. Sure. So government stopped with the mandated vaccinations because of ACDP. Thank you so much. All right. Some of us never jabbed from <laughs> ACDP. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Did you jab? No. Ark. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, 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 I never yeah, jabbed yeah. and I will never. Covered in the cloak. Yeah. Come on. Uh, yeah. Okay. Never. I will never do that. And then they spoke about mandatory vaccinations for children. Yes. We went to court. ACDP went to court yeah. and said this would be wrong. Yeah. And uh, we had an urgent application that, to that took more than six months. Mm. It was urgent. That could have been done within days yeah. or weeks maximum. Yeah. But they were avoiding. Yes. Why? Because they wanted to do it. Mm. 
And because, again, of ACDP, no child in South Africa has been forced and will be forced to take the jab. So I think all the guys here mm. need to say thank you to the ACDP. No, I'm saying on their behalf. Yeah, the sure. good reverend. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. I lost my father February 2020. I think he's the reason we were locked down because that guy. Hey, 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 hey. Anyways, we lost my father in February 2020 and then March we were locked down. And it was a very, very tumultuous two years. A lot of clashing views. Some of the voices we were trying to raise on social media, some of the questions we were trying to raise were shut down, mm. including some of these platforms we use today. And it, yeah. it, was, it was very sad. And to see people like yourself rising up at that time and, and speaking proudly and defending not Christians. Correct. You weren't defending a certain group. You weren't defending ACDP mm. voters. Mm. You were mm. saying every human being, we just happen to have a voice here in South Africa mm. and, and in the government, but every human being should be allowed to have choice. Correct. And you made sure that we fought because we don't know where we'd be today with some of the, the horror stories that we've heard afterwards. Yeah. Uh, of, of what has happened since. But from my side, thank you so much. You, you, know, you know that the, the World Economic Forum is now talking about a permanent lockdown. Permanent. Now, nobody's, well, maybe not correct. Most people are not going, the majority of people are not going to survive. If you have a permanent lockdown, no business, we are going to lose our jobs, we are going to lose our houses, we are going to lose our assets, we are going to lose our livelihoods. Permanent lockdown, you will be told you can't visit your mother who's sick in Limpopo. Many of us bur buried loved ones that we never got to see. Right. Now, we have experienced that. Now, ACDP, this is going to be one of the issues we'll be raising during campaigning. Mm. Other political parties have been given money. They are being sponsored. This is a real thing? You're confirming now? Yeah. Yeah. I confirm this. There are many, a few, well, let me say there are a number of newer political parties. Mm that have more money than us. Hmm. Why? Because when these guys give you millions, there are strings attached. Hmm. What do you give back? Okay. You have to Why make not? sure that when it's time to vote certain things in. Yeah. All right. When Mishwe will be saying, we ACDP says no permanent lockdown. Yeah. They will not be saying we support him. Because those who give him them money, expect them to support what their agenda. There is an evil agenda, I must say to you, sir. What, what, is, what is the rationale that the, the World Economic Forum is using for a permanent lo lockdown? Do you know? Well, some of us, well, because there are too many people on earth <laughs> and climate change. <laughs> they are fighting climate change. And some of us are called useless eaters. So, that is South Africa. They must start with Africans. They are not contributing to the world economy, they are saying. You know, I want to I wanna dispel this because a lot of people still believe in this thing of overpopulation, etc. If you ever go and look at the data online, you can go on Google, you can go and research. Luckily, they haven't started lying about that. Mm. Human beings occupy about one to one and a half percent of arable land on the planet. If you were to take all human beings and put them side by side together, we would occupy the city of Los Angeles only. All eight to 11 billion, whatever number you want to use, put all of us side by side, we would only be in one city on the, is it the West Coast? Is it the West Coast, mm. Los Angeles? West Coast, yeah. Mm. That's us. That's yeah. how much land we have. Now, South Africa, for people who are like, oh, we're overpopulated, squatter camps. If you ever get a chance, take a bus, take a taxi, drive, fly. It's even easier around fly. Around South yeah. Africa. Move from Johannesburg mm -hmm. to where mm -hmm. I come from in mm -hmm. Newcastle and just look mm. at the land. Mm. It, is, it is a myth and it's a lie. It's a lie. It definitely is a lie. Now, obviously, Bill Gates is the one who's pushing this. Yeah, dropping the names now. Yeah, no, no, no it's, yeah, fine. It's Bill Gates, he's, he's driving the myth and the lie mm. that there are too many people on Overpopulation. Earth. <laughs> and we are the target. That's why I don't understand our African, many African leaders, I think, are cowards. Many African leaders are cowards. Cowards or just greedy? Because maybe, they, maybe they're brave. Maybe they brave, but they choose money but over bravery. Well, it is possible. Yeah. But how can you be quiet when people say Africans are useless eaters? I will speak for my people. I'm not a useless eater.
Donald Trump called us a shithole. <laughs> Excuse my French. <laughs> now, th- 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 there's a dispute about that, mm-hmm. that whether he wrote that. There are people... Trump. Yeah. <laughs> there's a dispute about that. I've not said anything about that one, but I'm sure. speaking about the one, the video I've seen. Useless eaters. Yeah. We produce nothing. Mm. We all, don't... All, the, all the trial meds and all those things must be started there. Yeah. All the... Now we're speaking renewables and those things of which... All the first world nations have built their economies using fossil fuels. We have the coal. And, and we are not allowed to use We are being told, fuels. don't do not do that. And our president, who should be a lawyer, an educated person, buys into that. At least at least uh, the minister of uh, uh, energy, Ramokhopa, at least he still believes in fossil fuels. Electricity. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, of electricity. Yes. Uh, he still Sp- believes. Yeah. Sputla. Yeah. Sputla oh, is in, in fossil fuels. Yes. Fossil fuels. He's right. God did not make a mistake when he gave us all these minerals, when he gave us all this coal. This coal has helped Europe build their economies. They must still also, building the economies they now. They must also give us a chance yeah. to build our economies with. I think Unta Tekwere Mantash is also very yeah. pro. Yeah. He's very pro also. Uh, yeah, let's let's go back to the Christian state. Uh, so we've got Islamic states which have got very harsh consequences because they are run on the principles of the Quran. Mm-hmm. You go to those countries, you steal, you rape, you commit adultery. We have fewer. Yeah. Would you like, if you could, if you were to get into power, if the ACDP was to get the majority to a point where you can change the constitution? Would you like to turn South Africa into a Christian state, considering especially that the data says we are 80% Christian in this country and we follow biblical principles in this country. And whenever we have to apply the law, we say, what does the Bible say? And in terms of punishment and consequences, what does the Bible say? And then we follow that. The Bible should be a guide. Okay. It should not be imposed on everybody. Okay. Okay. Now, I don't believe in a Christian state. Okay. I don't believe in that. I believe in a constitutional state. We need to make sure that our constitutional principles are correct and they protect everybody. And those uh, rights that are enshrined should be balanced with responsibilities. Okay. Okay. We have we have rights, but no responsibilities. We never speak about the responsibilities. That's it. People want to make grant. People want to to you like. But then, what are you responsible for? Uh That's government. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. So if we can have a a balanced constitution, we want the constitution to to be amended. Okay. Okay. Because we want to bring in uh, responsibilities there, so that people can see. That they go, they, they must go hand in hand. We don't have a bill of responsibilities. No, we have a bill of rights. We have rights. No, I think this is a challenge for everyone who's going to be watching this. That we need mm. to draft a bill of responsibilities. Correct. To be read in conjunction with the bill of rights. Access to water, 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 okay. But then let's make sure our rivers are clean. Let's make sure we're okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bill so, of responsibilities. So, in the so that's what the ACD people like to do to introduce the Bill of Responsibilities, yeah. okay? Now, punishment, obviously, will be there. I believe in punishment. If you break the law, <laughs> you also must get some pain. pain. Hey, but when you don't want some pain, you want extreme <laughs> pain for extreme <laughs> crimes. For extreme crimes, pain should be um, um, measured and should also be consummated to okay. the crime committed. Okay, there has to be a balance between... The, the ACDP's official stance is you guys believe in the death penalty. Officially, we do. Okay. Officially, we do. And uh, if you see a Tzotzi arrested, <laughs> as they wet themselves, they cry. They don't want... For them, it's easy to hit others, yeah. to kill others. But they don't want to be killed. Of course. They don't want to be hurt. Correct. And yet for them, they find delight. That's why we speak animals. about human rights. Yeah. A, per- a person has killed someone else, taken away all the rights they could ever have. Mm. And we are told to preserve that it's perpetrator's like, rights. Yeah. Uh, which is unfair. It's it unfair. is unfair. It is unfair. And that person, obviously, when they have to go to court, uh, you and I must fund their lawyer. Of course. Pay for their lawyer. Mm. And a, a, a poor child who has been gang raped, no lawyer yeah. to represent the child. I mean, the whole thing is wrong. Mm. It has to be revisited. If if the victim, the the the, the criminal, the perpetrator, yeah. gets a free lawyer, 
The victim should also get a free lawyer. Mm. Let those guys fight together. Sure. Okay? I, I, I should not... The parents who are already crying because of the harm mm. and violation done to their child mm. have to ask you and I even borrow money yes. to have a lawyer that will face the lawyer that is defending the rapist is wrong. I, I love rugby. I grew up playing rugby. I think I was good at some point. Uh, I didn't play football like you and almost make chiefs. Uh, there's a rugby player who became very polarizing a couple of years ago from Australia called Israel Fulau. And Israel Fulau was kicked out of the national team. He was one of the best in his position. He played fullback, number 15 for Australia. One of the best in the world. He was kicked out of the Australian rugby team because he was posting on his social media certain biblical prescriptions. Part of them being the consequences of being an, an, a drunkard, an alcoholic, committing adultery, fornication. And in particular, it was this one. This one of saying you must repent against same-sex relations. One of the funders, one of the sponsors of the team was like, this guy, he needs to retract this. And he said, I'm a Christian. I will not retract what's in the Bible. And he was kicked out. One of the things the ACTP doesn't believe in is, is same-sex marriage. Uh, I'd like to believe. And your thoughts maybe on six, same-sex relations without persecuting those people. You know, they're human beings. They have their own rights. They, they make their own choices. But from a governance perspective and a legal perspective of, of what the ACTP would would like to see in this country from a same-sex relations and marriage perspective? You know, because the ACDP believes in the right to choose. Yeah. We believe in choice. We might disagree with your choices, yeah. but we are not going to prevent you from making your choice. Correct. Okay? So, people will continue doing that, but we would make a distinction mm. between a, 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 a relationship between a a heterosexual relationship mm -hmm. and a homosexual relationship. Yes. The reason I say that is because when we talk about marriage, mm. except the definition that now has been corrupted yeah. these days by people with an agenda, mm. we all grew up knowing that marriage is between a man and a woman. Mm. Would ACD would want to keep that okay. with a man and a woman? And then those who say man, man, man to man, woman to woman, then they should have a separate, different uh, definition for their relationship yeah. because it is not marriage. This one is, is established. It has been there for decades, yeah. for centuries, and let's not change it. Yeah. That has been our argument. Okay. okay? We don't say that they should not have the rights. Let them have whatever rights sure. are given to them. But you cannot say they are married. Okay. If a person wants to have a relationship with a dog, I saw somewhere hey. somewhere in, 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 in the UK, yeah. it, there was an article, a woman marrying, and there was a celebration. A woman I think the relation between dog. a human and an animal is called bestiality. It's bestiality. Now, some say, no, no, don't go that far. Bestiality is when they have a sexual relationship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But now there are people who say it is their right. Okay. It's their right. To choose my to choice, marry my free will, leave me alone. Okay. Now, if they want to have that choice, mm. we don't know what they're doing behind the scenes. Yeah. Okay. They could do that behind the scenes, but I will not call that. We will not agree that that's marriage. It cannot be marriage because marriage is between a man and a woman. Finish and lar. Most African states, I, I I apologize if I'm incorrect. Most African states have criminalized homosexuality. Mm. You don't believe in the criminalization of homosexuality. No, no, I, I don't. And the reason is because uh, we don't criminalize adultery, fornication. Okay. How many young people are sleeping around? Sh should we not criminalize adul no. adultery, fornication? No, 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 I mean, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sin in the Bible. It's so a sin, yes, you, sp you speak about a constitution that is guided by biblical principles. Mm -hmm. And you said you don't believe in a Christian state. So you, you still leave some wiggle room for people to make their mistakes. Let people make choices. Okay. And every choice should have consequences. They don't have to be harsh, is what you're saying. Like criminalizing. How do, no, not criminalize. That, that's not fair. Not, not, no, I would not say that's not fair. Yeah. But I think that's an, an issue that should be debated. Okay. Personally, I don't believe that um, uh, you should criminalize uh, 
homosexuality okay. in the sense that you, we don't agree with it. Sure. We don't say it is right. It's a sin according to the it Bible. It is a sin according to the Bible. Yeah. But we do not want to have a law that will criminalize every little sin in the Bible. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Everybody knows. Don't do this. If you do it, there's going to be consequences. Yeah. Okay. This is what God is saying. This is what the scriptures are saying. Mm. Because if you start with the um, criminalizing homosexuality, mm. um, how are you going to prevent hatred of this group of people? Yes. Because I don't believe in hating them. Yes. Okay. People are surprised when I tell them that uh, I have friends who are homosexuals. Mm. Actually, my tailor is a homosexual. homosexual. Yeah. yeah. Good friend. Good friends. Yeah. People you respect, people you work with. I yeah. work with. He is a, one of the best in the country, if not the best in the country. Yeah. He's my tailor. Yeah. And uh, when we meet, we hug, we embrace. Mm. Okay. Because there is no hatred. Hatred must be taken out of our lives. In, in the same way, maybe I'll use myself as an example, mm. because I've also got homosexual friends. Mm. I've got children with uh, different mothers. Mm. I'm not married. Mm. Um, Why are you not married? Hey, son. I okay. confess here. <laughs> <front of. laughs> okay, I'm joking. No, 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 I'm joking. No, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind the question at all. Okay. I'm, all right. I'm only raising it in, mm. the, in the reference of you're speaking about sins in the Bible mm. and punishing them and criminalizing and hatred. Mm. You'll find someone who's an adulterer, mm. a fornicator, mm. someone who's committing other sins, a drunkard, mm. uh, someone who steals, mm. someone who disrespects their parents, being like, yeah, we must arrest them. And you're like, if we are going to agree to what you're saying about the debate, if we are going to agree that we're going to criminalize homosexuality and arrest these people, then let's bring in all the sins in the Bible. That's what I'm saying. And you might find yourself in jail as well. Mm -hmm. Mm. I think that's fair. You, you, yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah. Okay. We, we don't have enough jails to can put in all the drunkards. How many drunkards do we have in the country? Most of them. <laughs> Most of the ones in parliament. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. I apologize. I apologize. But You're this, right. This, yeah. Mm. Uh, this is going to be the, my last uh, polarizing uh, question, and then I want to speak about maybe some of the potential solutions for some of the issues we have in this country. Uh, You've spoken out about what's happening in Israel and Palestine. Um, and you said the comparison with Israel uh, being apartheid is unfair. Y your views on Israel and Palestine, maybe just generally as a question, w w what do you think of what's happening there? What is your view? Maybe what is the ACTP's view? Because I realize now it's becoming one of the topics going into the elections where other parties are also giving their views. The ANC appears to be pro-Palestine. They've got a history with Palestine and the leaders there. You've had, I don't know if it's the DA and other leaders seem to side. They seem to side with an Israel. Other people have their own views. What is the ACTP's view? What is your personal view? What do you, what, what do you make of what's happening there? Well, it's very unfortunate what's mm. happening there. And the loss of life, innocent life, lives is regrettable. Yes. And I think South Africa and the international community are not serious about bringing peace there. Mm. I don't think they're serious. The war that's taking place there can be ended in 10 days if South Africa and the international community can decide to want to end the war. They will not add more ammunition, mm. give Palestinians ammunition, give Israelis ammunition, they continue fighting. Yeah. Somebody's making money out of Specifically this. American companies. This yeah. is available online. This yeah. is not a conspiracy theory. There yeah. are American companies, probably others as well, that are making record profits. It's the similar to the pharmaceutical companies. True. They made record profits during the whole vaccine thing. Yeah. They are military manufacturing companies in America and other places that are making record. Russia and Ukraine... Israel and Palestine, they they supplying. And there's yeah. a brilliant Nicolas Cage movie called Lord of War, which speaks about some of these things. Mm. Now, there are basically three things. Okay, mm. maybe let, before I talk to, about those three things, everybody has the right to live. Yeah. Every state has the right to self-defense. Mm. Every state. A government that cannot protect its people or does not protect its people is useless and is failing in its first responsibility or yeah. first mandate. 
the first mandate of every government is to protect the citizens. Yes. So our government is failing. Okay. Now, having said that, I believe there are three basic things that should be done to end the war this week or next week latest. Yeah. Three things. Number one, specifically talking about what's happening in Gaza, all hostages must be released. Mm. That was the reason... The hostages Israel, are held by uh, Hamas. Hamas. Yeah. Israeli hostages. Yeah. And some other... Other nations as well. Yeah. I think mm. South Africans were there as well. No, no, they've been released. Now. They've been released. South Africans, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, that was the reason Israel gave for going into war. Hostages. Hostages. So the international community should do something about it. Mm. Release all hostages. The court said hostages must be released. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Mm. But secondly, all tunnels must be shut down. All? Tunnels. Tunnels. Tunnels under. Okay? Okay. Those tunnels are being used by Hamas and their other groups. Mm. Okay? But we know about Hamas. Mm. Um, to infiltrate the state of Israel. Mm. Okay? There is nobody, including you and I, mm who'd agree to live in a house while we know underneath there's somebody who says they want to kill us mm. and our children. If a known rapist would want to join an estate mm. and the people in that estate know about it, they were going to protest. Mm. Nobody would want to have as their neighbor a rapist or a murderer yeah. because we want peace. Yeah. Okay. When a person goes to an estate, you're hoping you are going to live in peace. Yeah. Your children will be safe. Okay? So, no, because nobody would want to live when they know there's somebody underneath who has said it. Yeah. They're going to kill me. Should I, uh, how can I sleep mm. when I know that this person has vowed to kill me? Yeah. It's not possible. Yeah. Okay? So, all tunnels must be closed down. And then thirdly, Hamas and the Palestinians, although there are some who agree, mm. some don't agree, Hamas and the Palestinians must agree to accept the right of Israel to exist within safe and secure borders. That's the hardest one. That's the hardest one. They don't want to accept it. Now, and then the, the, the international community will talk about a two-state solution. Mm. Uh, the president will say two-state solution. Minister of International Relations, who say Mamuna Lady Pandu, no Lady Pandu, yeah, who say they believe in the two-state solution. Okay, a two-state solution is not possible. It's not possible for as long as Hamas or Palestinians mm. do not accept the right of Israel to exist. Mm. That is the most basic right. If you are not allowed to exist, how can you be a peaceful neighbor? Okay, you don't. Okay, you don't allow me to exist, yeah. and you say you want to live peacefully next to me. Yeah. It's simple. I mean, these are just lies and just political cliches, political uh, mumble, you, you, mumble, you, jumble. You believe in a two-state solution. You believe in Israel's rights to exist. Yeah, oh, for sure. Everybody yeah. must have the right to exist. Okay, mm -hmm. in South Africa, can we start the debate which tribe steals the most? Let's check. And that tribe must not have the right to exist. <laughs> you know, there's, the, you know there's a very sensitive topic mm. now. It's still small. Mm. And some people get angry when we speak about it because it's like we're giving it spotlight. Mm. Cape independence. Mm. I've got certain friends who believe in Cape independence. Mm. I've told them I don't believe in Cape independence. Mm. And I've told them if ever Cape independence were to happen, uh, this was me just teasing. I don't believe in it. But mm. I was saying... If you want Cape Independence to happen, then you must not be allowed to do any business in the rest of South Africa. Mm. You must re relinquish all your benefits because mm. you guys want to mm. exist as Cape Independence, but then make money from the rest of... No. Mm. Mm. There are people that have linked Cape Independence to the state of Israel to say, you start with Cape Independence and then they'll grow and end up taking over the rest of the country. Mm. And one of the arguments for Israel is Israel started off small as a small state and they've constantly been growing... Um, if we are to assume that that's true, do you believe in something like that? Or would you say, no, I, 
Number one, I, I don't even want to work on that assumption. Or number two, no, let's work on that assumption. If they can prove that they deserve more land, maybe they have a bigger population, maybe they've agreed, maybe they've bought. Do you, do you worry about some of those thoughts that some people raise? You, you know, I, I think maybe the safest thing for, for us to do yeah. if we want to debate this matter is to look at when a decision was made by the United Nations yeah. that Israel should have a state. Yeah. How much land did they have? Okay. Let's start there. Okay. When the decision was made, how much land were they given? Yeah. Israel has lost some say almost 10 times more of land that they had in the beginning that had been taken away from them. They've lost land, not expanded. Mm -mm. Okay. Lost. That's why I say to to if we have to be fair, let's start there, the beginning. Okay. How much land were they given? Okay. They've lost land. They say the whole of Lebanon was part of Israel in the beginning. Hmm. Okay. Now, I just wanted to ask your, yeah. your views on this. I don't like speaking about Israel and Palestine because we've got our own problems. See, now you're, you, you speak like a wise man now. Like a white man. Wise. Wise man. Oh. Wise hey. man. You want to solve your problem a first because man. you know that charity begins at home. No, definitely. Now, our guys there, they run there. They leave their own people suffering here. They're not doing anything about them. Makes they can them, spend makes, millions. Makes them look good globally. I mean, President Cyril Ramaphosa was there also trying to broker peace with Russia and Ukraine. But he's not brokering peace in the Cape Flats. And he's not dealing with taxi violence. You see that? And another very touchy topic uh, that I'd like to hear your thoughts on. And I think people that potentially want to vote for the ACDP. Um, <laughs> illegal foreigners. In particular, what we're seeing is uh, a form of Afrophobia where... Because the poorest people get to see African foreigners and not so much maybe the richer yeah. white foreigners, etc. Your, your thoughts on illegal foreigners and our immigration and our borders. Um, what is your stance on it? Do you believe in removing the borders and on Africa? This is a or, problem that is created by government. Mm. I will never agree with one African. Okay. And to have a borderless continent. I do not agree. And the question is, what do you do when you have one country, continent yeah. under one government mm. and you have as president a person like Robert Mugabe? What do you do? You, you don't like Mugabe? People like some of us like Mugabe. You don't like Mugabe? <laughs> no, you see, no, I, I don't. Okay. But the you way mean in terms of the character and some of his visions and his views within one, it's like having a. Uh, a, pr a, a premier of a province who's got very strong views. We want Cape independence. We want these things that are maybe different from the rest of the country. I, don't, I mean, something I, like that. I, I don't mind. I don't mind a strong leader. Okay. A strong governor. Mm. A strong. I don't mind that. Yeah. But be fair to everybody. Not only your friends. I mean, like Sir Ramaphosa is not fair to everybody. Yeah. That's why he's not a good president. He's not a good president. No. That's going to be the title of this video. So <laughs> Ramaphosa is not a good president. No, no, no. He definitely must be changed. He must be replaced. And I'm going, I'm going to say, Mr. President, I believe this is your last state of the nation address. Sorry, illegal foreigners. Uh, you don't believe in one Africa? No. You believe no. in having borders? I believe in having borders. Yeah. Because now when you have a problem in, with this one, you have the liberty to run to this. When you have a problem, you have a liberty to run to. You have Idi Amin. Maybe let me leave Mugabe because you, you support him. Let's talk about, <laughs> no, no, let's no, talk no, about no. Idi Amin. I don't mind you speak about Mugabe or anything. I, 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 and, and my views don't really matter. You don't need a tyrant okay. who will deny people's rights. You know, the attitude that was shown by government during lockdowns, mm. they want people to live like that. Okay. Talk Ta about taking away our rights, our free will, uh -huh. and and uh -huh. I hear you. Mm -hmm. I am a believer in free in, in rights. Yeah, yeah. People say if God did not want to uh, Adam and Eve to, to commit sin, why did they put that tree there? Yeah, he was putting it. That tree meant a choice. Yeah. Okay. You cannot you cannot say you are obedient mm. to the laws when you are not given something that you can do to show that you don't agree with the laws. Mm. You, you, you have to choose. Yeah. Okay, I'm told I must do this. I, I don't agree with it, but I must have a choice. Mm. Am I going to do it or am I going to not to do it? Yeah. 
So God has given us a choice. I respect the choices that God has given us. Mm. And all choices must have consequences. Sure. Okay? You drive on the right when you're told drive on the left. Mm. There will be consequences. Yeah. You have the right. You can go on the freeway. Drive sure. on the right. But there will be consequences. You can't say, I saw in America that driving on the right. Mm. I also want to drive on the right. This is South Africa. Sure. Do it there, but not here. Okay? There will be consequences if you do that. So people must be given choices mm. and yet be told there are consequences for all the choices you make. Would you, would you deport all illegal foreigners? Illegal, definitely. Illegal, I would. Yeah. Definitely. It sounds like you want to say something about the legal ones as well. No, really? legal ones. When people are legal in the country, yeah. we all will benefit from that legal person. Sure. And I don't, I don't wish that South Africans must be anti people who come from outside. Yeah. Some of the best uh, lecturers, yeah. mathematics lecturers, yeah. they come from outside. True. So are we going to deny our, our children the best just because the person was not born in South Africa? Yeah. Zimbabwe has produced excellent teachers. Correct. Excellent teachers, lecturers, mm -hmm. excellent. Mm -hmm. We need them in South Africa sure. to better and improve the education of our children. Yeah. So we must not have the mentality of if you are not born in South Africa, we don't want you. Yeah. We want the best in South Africa. That's what the world is doing. It's taking our best. Yeah. Our best are taken out of Africa so that they can do better things, better education for their children. True. Sure. They think like that. Let's also think like that. If these people want our best, what can we do to keep our best in Africa? Uh, I sat with the pastor a couple of weeks ago and um, I asked him who he's voting for. He was like, he's not sure. He gave me some options. I said, you're a Christian. And he said, yes. I'm like, I believe that you're a Christian. If you're a Christian, you should be voting for the ACTP. And he was like, you know what? You're actually right. Why do you think the ACTP has struggled to grow as big as it could be, and in particular struggled to maybe get people who claim to be staunch Christian to say, I have no choice, I'm going with the ACTP? There could be a number of reasons. Yeah. Uh, one of them, uh, people have respected what Mr. Mandela has done. Yeah. They have said, while voting for ANC, I'm showing my appreciation for Nelson Mandela, okay. which I respect, even though I don't agree with that. Okay. Okay. Because in, in as much as I respect Mr. Mandela, love Mr. Mandela, um, I believe my love for Christ should trump mm -hmm. my love for any other human being. Okay. Because they have not done for me what Christ did for me. Yeah. That is why my loyalty is first to Jesus Christ because of what he has done for me. Yeah. And then I can think about other people. Yeah. So uh, ACDP, <clears throat> some people have said, uh, we are not militant enough. <laughs> some people have said, I must be like Julius Malema I said, mm. never. Yeah. Julius doesn't have respect for elders and for authority. I have respect. I will not change what my parents taught me mm. in order to benefit personally. Mm. My parents taught me respect everybody, respect authority, it will go well with you. Teach your children respect for you, respect for elders, and they will have a better future. Yeah. Okay? People without respect, they don't last. They don't last. Mm -mm. Malema, I don't think you won't will, last. I don't think you will attain my age. I, I need to I need to defend Rich Williams because he's another guy that I like very okay. much. Okay. Let's I, hear. Look, I, uh, I was part of I still used to vote ANC in those days. Okay. I was part of that group of the ANC Youth League when Omar Lima were there. Mm. And in his defense, and, and I'm I'm not meant to defend him okay. because I understand all the criticisms. I criticize him today. Okay. I've been attacked by EFF supporters, etc. I think it came at a time where he felt like our elders were letting us down. Mm. So it becomes difficult to respect authority and elders where you feel like my father promised me this he, he said here are your rights here are your responsibilities if you do wrong there will be consequences if you do right there will be consequences and as an obedient child you followed up until a point where it was like but you're not giving me the consequences we have served you're not building a better nation we have tried to do this the thing that you said we mustn't do these sins we mustn't commit you're committing them so then I think it was it was translated as disrespect because I think you try. It's, we did the same thing with the apartheid government, I think. We tried to engage. I think about Martin Luther King, about Malcolm X tried. You tried to engage, 
And these people are not seeing you as as human and they're not respecting you, especially as a child who's like, Ntate, I'm following you, but now you, you're not giving me mutual respect. And I think that's when he got disrespectful. Yeah, you, you, you know, uh, I think this takes us back to painting people with the same, same brush. brush. Yeah. Which is wrong. I hear you. Okay. I hear exactly where you're going. Yeah, yeah which is wrong. Uh, that boy of mine, Yeah. I respect him. Yeah. You know, there are people who have question me when they hate me call him ask him say i call him say yes okay i call young people who are males say yeah. why because it's my way of making them understand that it's important to respect yes other people he's my son but i, I call him say yes okay and i don't have problem with yeah. that why because i am engraving and instilling something I believe will make him a better man yeah. to respect other people. I hear you. To me, you are a say. All of you, you are say. Yeah. Okay, that's one a, 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 one simple way of showing my respect and appreciation for Correct. you. Correct. All right. And you're saying someone like Malema doesn't matter. We are banned. Uh, ah, he doesn't matter. He okay. doesn't matter. He doesn't matter. Which, which for me I is problematic. You. I hear you. Yeah, which for me is problematic. Uh, Reverend, I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to mention before we wrap up. Well, I enjoyed having this conversation with you. Thank you. And I think you have a great station. I'm looking forward to maybe one day coming back. No, no, please, or, please do. When the vision has materialized. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll recruit you that time. I mean, then, I'm not even Christian, so you must yeah. first pray for my salvation. You, I'll do that. No problem. You're a good man. I'd like you to please, if you don't mind, sorry, Sizwe, uh, into the camera for all the people that are watching, why they should vote for the ACTP, um, maybe why they should register and, and yeah, I, I need to your political leader. Yeah, so sure. this is your mini chance to campaign. <laughs> yeah, it, it was nice being on this program with you. And thank you very much for watching. As you heard that I am the leader or the president of the ACDP, which is the African Christian Democratic Party. I hope you have registered. If not, please go online, IEC online, and register. Register to do what? Register to vote for change. I want to ask you to vote for a political party that will respect you for who you are. Even though we may disagree, that doesn't make me disrespect you as I expect you not to disrespect me because of my beliefs. So vote for the ACDP. What will the ACDP do for you? Some of the things we spoke about, ACDP will respect your individual right. We will fight to protect your rights. Okay? Not right to do wrong. Rights that you know are rights. Okay? Because some people are demanding rights that are not right. Okay? But I'm saying ACDP will protect your right. Something that you spoke about that is definitely going to be uh, heard in South Africa from my lips and others is that as there are plans to take us back to March 2020, ACDP says no. Nobody should force you to do what you don't want to do. All right. God who loves you and who wants to save you will not force you to be saved. He's asking you to make a choice. All right. ACDP will ensure that South Africa. Uh, becomes a safe country. Many people are living in fear. You could be living in fear. You could be thinking of even emigrating. I'm saying to you, ACDP is going to ensure that criminals that give you sleepless nights are going to be punished. All right? Government will not tell you this. ANC will not say, ACDP say we will arrest them and punish them. Punish them and lock them up to ensure that you live in a safe environment. We want to make our streets safe. We want to make our streets clean. We want to ensure that your children are safe when they walk in the streets, even at night, which is not the case now. We want your children, we want you as a parent to also have rights, to also have responsibilities. Help us. We want to work with you to build a model nation in this country. South Africa has enough resources so that you and I and your, our relatives should not go to bed hungry. There is enough for everybody. But unfortunately, we have too many liars, looters, and thieves that are stealing resources in government. The ACDP will not tolerate 
as we are Christians, we will not tolerate, tolerate taking what does not belong to you. ACDB believes in hard work, these hands, we must use these hands to work for our uptake, to work for our living, to work for our children and children's children. Even our children will be taught to use their hands to work to, in order to build their safe future. When it comes to housing, we are not just going to drop uh, RDP houses all over. No, we'll get you material and get you somebody to show you this is how we build. All right. So that you will have the pride of saying, I built this house. It was not given to me like a Father Christmas was just ditching out houses. No, 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 no. We will give you resources. We will give you a, a land that is uh, serviced to ensure that you can build the house of your choice. We'll have somebody to help you build the house of your choice. So help the ACDP to come to power. People say, is it possible? I'm telling you today, all things are possible. With your vote, with your support, you can have a godly government. A government led by men and women who are not thieves, who not steal from you, but who will respect you. So God bless you as you consider supporting the ACDP. Sharp, sharp. We call you guys uh, pensioners. Uh, one of my favorite pensioners, one of the oldest serving, longest serving members of parliament, Reverend Kenneth. Mishra, I'm honored to have sat with you and I look forward to you visiting us again soon. Thank you, sir, for having me. I enjoyed every minute of our conversation. Thank you.